It was another deadly week in the Florida Keys as more and more carcasses of the deceased sawfish were actually pulled from near shore waters. This as we learn of at least one at risk sawfish that was rescued and brought into a marine facility as the science continues to try to figure out what is causing this. Here's tonight's Don't Trash Our Treasure. It's like we're watching the ocean fall apart right in front of us rapidly. And this may be the last that we see of the sawfish. The death toll continues to climb. It had come up into the shallows, and this one was pretty large. Another critically endangered small tooth sawfish stranding itself off Isla Mirada over the weekend as Andy Thomas was driving by on the overseas highway near mile marker 74. Yeah, I, I just lost all emotion and was like, this is, this is just absolute insanity. There is something in the water. FWC again updating its numbers, 38 now reported dead since January. Just Tuesday, another sawfish washed up on the shores of Fort Zachary Taylor Beach in Key West. This, the sixth to have died this past week alone. More than 150 others have been observed in crisis. Now we have put together a team to attempt to rescue and potentially rehab sawfish that are in distress. We're On this week in South Florida, Gil McCray, director of FWC's Fish and Wildlife Research Institute, described the unprecedented emergency response launched by NOAA to try and save sawfish in distress. Keep in mind, this has never been done before. It's a very tricky thing to find a sawfish that is healthy enough, given the distress we've seen them in, to survive the transport to a facility for potential rehab. This sawfish that beached itself in Key West last week was not strong enough to save and died. But this one, found in a canal in Kudjo Key Saturday, was successfully rescued. So the one that was caught yesterday, is that the first one? I believe it is, yes. We reached out to NOAA and Moat Marine Lab to find out what happened to this fish. So far, they've not responded. It just doesn't seem to be letting up, and we still don't know what the cause is. Also on the case, Dr. Dean Grubbs, a researcher and sawfish expert with Florida State University. Since Friday, he's been back in the Keys with his team, catching sawfish to help solve this marine mystery. One of our big goals is to provide samples from healthy sawfish that the pathologists and toxicologists can then uh, compare to samples that are collected from the distressed sawfish as well as the dead sawfish. So Grubb reports that he and his team were able to catch, sample, and release one healthy female just over 11 feet and two healthy males about 13 feet long. They're big animals. They're super strong. They're way quicker than you might think they are. And then they've obviously have this <laughs> toothed rostrum, this weapon on the end of their head that they can swing with an incredible speed. It is dangerous, but critical work. You know, we can't fix it until we find out what, what's causing it, for sure. And then we can then we can backtrack and figure out ways that we can prevent it from happening in the future. More than 70 other marine species have also been documented spinning and swimming erratically from Key West to Palm Beach. Some have turned up dead, but it is the sawfish that has suffered the highest mortality. You know, they're fish eaters. And so if it is something and you're a toxin that accumulates up the food chain and they're eating the fish that are, are affected by this, then it could potentially accumulate in them more than others. Elevated levels of Gambier discus, a benthic toxic microalgae, have been detected in water samples taken so far, and toxins have also been found in the flesh of necropsied fish. But scientists believe it's too soon to conclusively say that's what's causing this. Well, you have to realize there are multiple algal species that produce toxins and multiple toxins. So we have this matrix of multiple species and multiple toxins. The research continues with urgency. There is so much at stake. If we find out that the cause is, is um, because of something that we're doing to the environment, it should be a wake up call for everybody that we need to change what we're doing um, and, and try to, to uh, repair this, this environment that we've, we've definitely damaged before it's irreversible. Scientists say right now there is no end in sight to this devastating event. It is so important that you contact FWC immediately if you happen to come across a sawfish in distress or population numbers already critically low. And we have to do everything we can to save the ones we have left. 
We have those hotline numbers for you, plus so much more on this in our web story. Just scan that QR code. It'll take you straight to the Don't Trash Our Treasure page on local10.com. There really is so much at stake, and this should really be ringing loud I mean, alarm bells to all of us right now. It's, it's frightening. I mean, the planet is screaming at us right now. We really have we, to pay we attention. Have to listen. Yep. Yeah, we do.